Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim Defeaty. Good morning, I'm Jim Defeaty and welcome to Facing South Florida. While I realize the news has been dominated this week by the impeachment of Donald Trump, I wanted to use the next half hour to explore a couple of local issues that deserve more attention. Later in the show, we will look at the sharp increase in Cubans being deported back to Cuba. But first, I want to talk about this grand jury report right here. It was issued earlier this month. The grand jury found that more than a year after 17 students and teachers were killed in Parkland, many of the problems that led to those deaths remain across the state. The grand jury found turf wars between cities and counties have prevented police radio systems from being upgraded. They found that schools and school districts manipulate the data they report to the public to make schools seem safer than they really are. And they found that many Many charter schools are violating the law by failing to hire school resource officers to protect their students. It is a stunning report and there is a lot more to it that I want to cover. Joining me this morning is Ryan Petty, whose 14-year-old daughter Elena was one of the students killed. He served in the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Commission that developed many of the recommendations that the state has enacted. Ryan, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me, Jim. Um, when you looked at this grand jury report, what was your first reaction? Because it outlines a lot of problems that seem to still persist. Uh, stunning would be the word that I would use. Um, it, it dovetails nicely with the work we've done on the commission, but they've gone, in many cases, a step further in outlining not only what the problem is, but their recommendations for, for solving. And, and I want to get into some yep. of the specifics here, but the, the broad impression that I'm left with in reading this is that the concern seems to be that while the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Task Force that you served on, the legislature, others have tried to enact and bring forward recommendations for change, what I'm hearing or what I see in this grand jury report is a lot of efforts to try to not really enact those, those, those measures, but to sort of work their way around them and manipulate the system in a way so that things appear better than they are without actually changing some things. Now, I know some things have changed, but, but the biggest takeaway I took from this was that unless there's an enforcement mechanism, some teeth on the state level to guarantee districts are doing something, you cannot count on the districts to police themselves. Yeah, I think, you know, initially after the tragedy, I think the governor and the legislature believed passing the uh, Margie Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Act and the the act of, of impaneling the commission to study what went, what went wrong and make recommendations uh, and bringing experts in would be enough to convince the leaders of our school districts across Florida to make the changes that they that they should make to keep students and staff safe, but it hasn't been enough. And it's not just school districts. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk mm -hmm. about some of the problems. And one of the big problems that was identified was the lack of co coordination among radio systems. Yeah. That, that, that police agencies you know, could not talk to each other, Broward sheriffs with different right. municipalities. And I know that there was a lot of talk about wanting to change that, but I'm gonna read you part of the grand jury report. There are serious deficiencies in our state's patchwork system of county municipal emergency communication systems. Point two, those deficiencies are ongoing. And point three, the stakeholders involved have not and do not appear willing to take the steps to resolve these deficiencies. That's stunning. It's, it's unbelievable. We, we live in a world where I can pick up a cell phone uh, and I can, I can open an app and talk to almost anyone in the world instantly. I can share information with them. I can share pictures, videos, text. Our, public safety first responders can't talk to each other across imaginary lines that exist in our counties. Coral Springs had trouble talking with BSO, BSO with Coral Springs. It's particularly acute in Broward County where we're operating on radio technology that's 30 years old. None of us would accept 30-year-old cell phone, so why are we forcing our first responders to use 30-year-old technology? It, it's worse than that in some ways. One of the things that this report looked at, which I hadn't even considered before, is that the design of some schools, I guess the, the concrete nature of right. them and the structure of the buildings themselves, make them so that radio signals are almost impenetrable, so right. that radio signals cannot get into the school system. I guess there's ways around that. You can have repeaters and other things, right. but, that, but that in the meantime, 
rather than solve the problems, school districts in Broward and across the state are, are giving, are getting and receiving certificates of occupancy, at least on a temporary level, right. so that we're putting schools in, we're putting students in schools we know not to be safe. And this again, I'm going to quote again from the grand jury report. It is inexcusable to open a single school building to Florida's children without the proper equipment to allow first responders to communicate via radio. From minor incidents to major crises, radio communications are vital to the ability of emergency personnel to respond effectively. Plain spoken, right. but yet that's not happening. Yeah, and, and the, you know, the fire has done a very good job. You, you, you can't occupy a building or bring students into a school until that fire inspector, that building has passed inspection from fire. We don't do the same thing with law enforcement. They, they don't get a vote, let's say, on whether or not um, safety pr procedures are being followed in that school or whether or not their radio systems would work in that school. And what we saw at Stoneman Douglas, unfortunately, was um, law enforcement relegated to using hand signals to communicate that day. One of, I want to move on to another area in this report. Oh, well, actually, last thing on the radio system, because it, because they actually talk about Broward specifically mm -hmm. and, a, and a failure here. Let me, I'll just sort of read this now. We also recommend that the BSO in Broward County ensure that Broward County's 911 centers are properly staffed. Even the best equipped call centers must still have sufficient numbers of trained employees to ensure they are ready to meet the critical needs of their jurisdiction and Broward County is no exception. So even if you fix these problems, if the call centers, the 911 dispatch centers, aren't being properly staffed, which this clearly suggests Broward is not, then what's the point? If you can't, look, first responders, seconds matter. And the quicker that 911 call can come in and get to the proper agency, responding agency, the better. In Broward County, what we, what we learned, unfortunately, on February 14th is those calls were going to different call centers and they weren't getting to the proper first responders and that delayed response and potentially cost lives that day. So the next area I want to turn to in the report deals with how schools and school districts report incidents within their school system. Mm -hmm. It's uh, We were looking up the acronym before, it's right. known as SESIR, School Environment Safety Incident Reports. It's supposed to be a system where, that's available to the public, where a, a parent could learn how many, how many incidents were there in schools, of fighting, of serious right. incidents, so that you can gauge and judge, are, you know, is the school providing the proper environment for my child? Right. But more importantly, it also can be used as an indicator as to whether or not more intervention is needed in a particular school and what this report found which is absolutely stunning to me and I, again I'll just read part of it it appears that they have merely become experts at data manipulation which is happening on the ground in schools and at the district level rather than try to take what happened at Stoneman Douglas seriously they're now just learning ways around the system to manipulate the data so that things don't seem as bad as they are nothing unfortunately nothing here has changed we saw evidence of data manipulation before Stoneman Douglas, and it continues today. You know, if, if I am responsible, if I work for one of these districts and I'm responsible for reporting this data, the thought, and after reading this grand jury report, the thought has to have crossed my mind, what do I look like in an orange jumpsuit? This is serious. They have got to take this seriously. You talk about administrators. Administrators in these districts right. need to take this seriously. And if they're manipulating data, which I think it's pretty clear that they reclassify the incidents so that they don't have to report them to CESAR, uh, that is uh, unfortunately, uh, in, my, in my mind, I think the jury is sending a, uh, the grand jury is sending a clear signal that there will be indict indictments forthcoming. That's what they, that, that is very, very much what they're talking about is that any school district that takes part in this, you know, those individuals responsible can be, will held, be held accountable under law and could be arrested. And it doesn't just mean what happened at Stoneman Douglas could happen again, but these are environments where our teachers don't feel safe to teach. Our students can't learn. If there's a disruption in our, in, in a classroom where a student is, is, becomes violent, none of the children in that classroom have an opportunity to learn that day. And I think we have to take that seriously in Florida. 
Uh, so they talk a lot about problems within Broward, but I don't want to leave Miami-Dade out because Miami-Dade has its own sort of section in here about data manipulation, right. and I'll just sort of look at some of this. Data manipulation can also occur at the district level. What they were saying in, in Broward is that it's happening school to school to school. Right. In Dade County, they're saying it's a district-wide policy to manipulate the data. That essentially, a recent example come to us from Miami-Dade School District. In 2014-15 school year, more than 5,000 fights were reported in Miami schools but by 2015-16 the very next year the number went down to 311 and the grand jury asked sarcastically was there some innovative program to make it drop from 5,311 no what Miami-Dade did was they reclassified what constitutes a fight or a serious incident they just stopped counting certain things entirely and stopped reporting them it wasn't that the right. problems went away right. they just they just erased them from the records yeah and that that's that's clearly a violation of certainly the intent of the legislation the intent of reporting Look, parents deserve to know what's going on in their schools. And if we have administrators artificially manipulating data, reclassifying incidents so that their schools or their districts look better, again, I think the grand jury was very clear. Indictments will be forthcoming. Again, I'm going to quote from the report. This example that they're talking about with regard to Miami-Dade, this example underscores the fact that the institutional incentives to find every way possible to underreport and manipulate this data appear to be irresistible. And one of the things the grand jury is saying is maybe there needs to be more of an outside third party checking on these school districts give more power to the state department of education let them come in and supervise or at least vet what the numbers are and the process to make sure it's it's being done the same across counties and make sure that the information is reliable i know that school districts can't stand stuff coming from tallahassee in the department of education but it seems to me that we can't trust the local school districts any longer the the incentives are in the wrong direction for our school districts and for those local administrators Principals want to have a safe school. Uh, they want to report that they have a safe school. So there's incentives, either spoken or unspoken, right, that that drive them towards underreporting. And districts are no different. And I think, at a minimum, the state needs to have audit capabilities and some sanctioning power. As the grand jury uh, noted, if there aren't sanctions, if there aren't teeth in the audit, uh, then they'll find ways to manipulate the data. I, I just want to take a step back. There are other areas of the report. We'll post it online as well if people want to be able to read the report for themselves. It's 18 pages. But to say that you've given so much for this would be an understatement. You've, you've turned your anger and your pain into trying to do something positive mm -hmm. by coming up with things so that other parents like yourself don't have to experience what you've experienced. Right. Does it frustrate you? Does it anger you? What What is the feeling when you look at a report like this and think about what you've given to try to make things better and how the response has been? What uh, you know, it makes me sad. But it make what makes me angry is that these are people that stand up every day in the public and say that their whole mission, their whole purpose, is to educate children and to and to make their lives better. And if they can't if they can't implement simple security measures to keep them safe, nothing they do matters. If that child doesn't come home, if that staff member doesn't come home at the end of the day, then nothing they've done matters. I want to also just ask Nicholas Cruz, his mm -hmm. trial was scheduled to get underway here in January. Uh, it's been delayed until at least this summer, no specific date even then. How difficult is it for you, your family, to just have that date just sort of hanging out there, this trial just sort of waiting sometime in the future? Uh, you know, we, uh, disappointed uh, that it's delayed. I understand the wheels of justice are going to turn slowly here, and and I, I want to make sure we get it right. Um, um, but, um, you know, for the benefit of the families and those of us that, that lost loved ones that day, uh, we'd like to see things move as swiftly as possible. Um, not surprised by yesterday's um, delay, but we, we would like to see justice and we'd like to see it swiftly.
and I, I can only imagine how difficult the holidays are. Um, and you have, of course, all the families have our sympathies, and and but more importantly, you have our call to action to make sure that the recommendations that you came up with in the right. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas report, this grand jury report, we continue to shine a light on this as much as possible. That's what I think the public can do to help you in, in going forward. I think shining, continuing to shine a light and holding people accountable when they when they make mistakes or continue to make mistakes is the best thing we can do for our for our children. Ryan, thank you very much and have a happy new year. Thank you. All right. When we come back, the rise in deportations to Cuba and the silence from Miami's Cuban American community.